time we are going to talk about breaking vectors into components. Before when we were adding vectors, um, every single two vectors happen to be at a 90 degree angle from each other. And that's, as you can imagine, a very special situation. Most of the time, forces, velocities, they're not going to be at a 90 degree angle. So how do we deal with this mathematically? We are going to deal with it by taking complicated vectors, breaking in them into parts, also called components, and that makes the math a lot easier. Here's a couple examples. This fellow is pushing on the baby carriage. Some of his push is forward, and some of the push is actually down, and he gets to lean on the baby carriage a little bit. This happens all the time in navigation. An airplane is flying with a certain airspeed through the air, but there's wind, and the wind is moving. The actual medium the plane is flying through is moving. Um, again, these are not necessarily going to be at 90 degree angles, and pilots have to account for this combination of both vectors as they determine ground speed, how fast and what direction are they actually covering the ground. This fellow is trying to control his puppy, and there's the force in that direction. Some of that force is backwards, and some of that force is up. And you can see that the force is up because the dog's feet are coming up off the ground. He's stopping the dog, but he's also lifting the dog a little bit. So we are going to spend some time breaking vectors into parts. So here's an example. Edith is pushing a chair across a room with 10 pounds of force at an angle of 60 degrees below the horizontal. I want to know what's the component forward and what's the component downward. So here is my vector. She's pushing with 10 pounds of force at an angle that is 60 degrees below horizontal. So there's 60 degrees. How am I going to figure out the forward and the downward direction? Well, to break a vector into components, I take that vector and I'm going to turn it into a triangle. You can see two sides of the triangle here and here. I'm going to create a perpendicular to this horizontal line. And do 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 by doing that, I have just created a right triangle. This is 90 degrees, 60, and that is 10. This vector, this section of the triangle, is going to be my force forward. And this side of the triangle is going to be my force down. So let's redraw this so this is a little bit prettier. 10 pounds. 90 degrees, 60 degrees, force forward, and force down. Now, if this is the angle I'm talking about, um, this is the adjacent side, this is my hypotenuse, and this is my opposite side. So if I want to mess around with adjacent and hypotenuse, that means I'm going to have to use cosine. So the force forward in this situation the adjacent is going to be equal to the cosine of theta times my hypotenuse, which is that 10 pounds. So the cosine of 60 degrees times the hypotenuse, which is 10 pounds. And the force forward, I'm going to pick up my calculator. So 60 cosine times 10 is going to be 5 pounds. Now the force down, this happens to be my opposite side. So the calculation here is going to be the opposite is going to be equal to the sine of theta times my hypotenuse, or the sine of 60 degrees times 10 pounds. And I'm going to end up with 8.66 pounds. And that's going to be my force down. You think you got it? OK, let's try another one. If you got it, try this. If not, follow along with me. Herman is pulling a sm small children on a sled. If he pulls with a force of 78 pounds at an angle of 63 degrees above the horizontal, what's the component forward and what is the component upward? So here's, I've got my fellow and he's pulling upward on this sled and he's pulling with 78 pounds of force. So as he pulls with 78 pounds of force, 63 degrees above the horizontal, I'm going to make a triangle out of that. This is going to be the force up, and this is going to be the force forward. And the force forward, that's going to be my nice 90 degree angle. So force up, that happens to be my opposite side. So I'm going to use sine. So the opposite is going to be equal to the sine of theta 
times the hypotenuse, so the sine of 63 times 78 pounds of force. And then I do the math, 63 sine times 78. I ended up with an answer of 69.5 pounds. Remember, we always put units on numbers. The force forward is the adjacent side. This is the adjacent side. So I am going to use um, the cosine. So cosine of theta times the hypotenuse is going to be the cosine of 63 degrees times my 78 pounds. And when I do that, let's try it, 63 cosine times 78, I got 35.4, whoops, 35.4 pounds. You got it? Okay, cool beans. Uh, part of your homework, you're going to have to do this. And this skill right here, breaking things into components, we're going to do it throughout the entire course. That will end this one, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.